Okay, so here we have a question that's asking you to calculate the bad debt expense if we are using the allowance method um, for accounts receivable. Now it also is telling us, and I'll switch here, that the allowance for doubtful accounts has an $825 debit balance. Now that's really important. The two important things here are that we're using the accounts receivable method and that we have a pre-existing balance. So that pre-existing balance would be what we would fill in here on the um, left side of the, the T account for the allowance account, 825. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize that would change colors on you. $825, remember our debits, Go on the right side, I'm sorry, on the left side, credits on the right, debits on the left, credits on the right. So we get, for the allowance account, we start with an $825 original balance. Now we have to go through and do a few things to fill in the rest of the, the information here. So they're giving us an aging schedule. So it makes a lot of sense if you think about it. For the accounts that are currently current, there's 80,000 of those, and of those that are current, the company tends to find that 1% of those become uncollectible. Now, as we move down the line here, you see the amounts get less. So if we go to over 90 days, we only have $2,500 worth of receivables outstanding over 90 days. And of that 2,500, typically 35% of those that go over 90 days become uncollectible. So you get a higher percentage the longer the customer's balance is uncollectible, which again makes a lot of sense. So it's pretty easy to calculate that. You just take the amount and we multiply that times the percent that we expect to become uncollectible and that would be $800 for the accounts that are current. We do one to 30 days, $27,000 times 5% uncollectible amount is $1,350. 31 to 60, same thing. We're gonna get 3680. 61 to 90, $5,700, 15% of those we expect to become uncollectible or we estimate to. And then we do the very last one, 2,500 times 35% is 875. And then what we have to do is add all of those numbers together. So if we add them all up, we're gonna get 7,000 five hundred and sixty dollars so this is the primary difference between the um, allowance method using percentage of receivable or accounts receivable and then using our sales so this number 7560 becomes the amount that we need to see as the ending balance in our allowance account after we're done making a journal entry Again, that 7560 is what we need to see as our ending balance. We already have a pre-existing balance. This tells us that the company actually wrote off more uncollectible accounts than they had previously uh, estimated in the past. So we need to account for those uh, accounts. So the way that we do that is we're gonna take the 7560 and we have to add the 825 and that comes to 83.85. So 83.85 will become my credit in my allowance account, allowance for doubtful accounts. So again, those offset each other. The credit is gonna be decreased by the debit, which will bring me down to a credit balance of 75.60, which is exactly what we need. So when it says here, the ending allowance for doubtful accounts should be 7560, we just figured that out. And the bad debt expense for that period is gonna be 85, or I'm sorry, 8385. So our journal entry will be to debit the bad debt expense. We're gonna write off the expense in the same period, which is 8385. And then we will credit that allowance account to set monies aside somewhat 
to pay off those uncollectible counts as they become uncollectible in the future. 85. So what we would have here would be a debit. This is a debit. We just carry that over here. Again, remember, debit's on the left, credit's on the right. 83, 85. So the ending balance then is 83, 85. And that's it.